This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1497. It's time for your QBR, quarterly business review, by Joel of 5amjoel.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is a show where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet, sometimes a little too enthusiastically. But I can't help it. Money is an incredible resource that we can use to craft the life of our dreams. So thanks for joining me today and every day. And quick reminder, it's tax day today here in the US. So hopefully you have everything in order. I actually got my taxes done mid-March before I saw that the deadline has been extended a month with everything going on. So if you're not prepared, here's your push to giddy up. But as a listener of this show, I'm sure you've got it all squared away. So with that, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. It's time for your QBR, Quarterly Business Review, by Joel of 5amjoel.com. What's a QBR? The last company I worked for had a grueling ritual at the beginning of each new sales quarter. Each sales rep had to prepare a detailed PowerPoint presentation and deliver it to a room full of peers, managers, and executives from out of state. They called it a Quarterly Business Review, or QBR. The presentations were to explain the past quarter sales results, how they were achieved, lessons learned, and how the sales rep planned to meet future goals. Watching everyone else's presentation, it was always interesting to see how intimate each sales rep knew their territory and business. Some reps were extremely prepared and could recall specific facts, figures, and exact details about each customer and sales process. Very impressive stuff. Others that were less prepared would fail miserably and would be eaten alive by the executives. Watching them squirm for an hour in front of a large room of people was a horrible experience. Some poor reps in the past have resigned or quit mid-presentation or ran out of the room crying from the public beratement. Anyway, not surprisingly, the well-prepared reps always did well in sales. The less prepared reps usually were underperformers in sales. As much as we all hated QBRs and complained about them, we understood they were a necessary practice each quarter. Constantly reviewing your performance ensures you're accurately planning, learning from mistakes, and preparing for the best future outcomes. Mind your own business. As brilliant as my coworkers were at their jobs, they surprisingly knew very little about their own personal business. They could create and memorize a complex billing schedule for a client, but would have no idea how much money they had in their personal checking account. If only the awesome and fine-tuned skills they learned at work could be brought home for personal benefit and financial gain. Enter the personal QBR. Shortly after I started doing quarterly reviews for my work, I started doing quarterly reviews for my home. Instead of presenting to the bosses at work, I presented to my boss at home, my wife. As my personal investment portfolio keeps growing, real estate assets, several mortgages, credit cards, various retirement accounts, etc., it's becoming increasingly difficult to calculate my overall net worth. It's no longer back of the napkin math. It now involves a detailed tracking spreadsheet. I've found monthly net worth tracking to be too tedious and annual tracking to be too infrequent. QBRs are perfect for me. January 1st, April 1st, July 1st, and October 1st. Takes about one to two hours to log into all of my online accounts, add remove credit cards and assets, update property values, and take a few notes about what's happened within the past quarter. What about online services like Mint.com and Personal Capital? I'm a big fan of automation, but while Mint and Personal Capital are great for tracking daily expenses and ongoing stock portfolio performance, I found them horrible for tracking real estate, shared assets, private loans, short-term investments, and connectivity with smaller banks or mortgage companies. Also, there's no good place to enter notes or record details around major events that have sudden effects on your net worth. I do, however, use mint.com religiously for tracking spending, which I'll talk about another time. Tracking spreadsheets suck. No, they don't. Your financial situation sucks. Your spreadsheet will only suck if you put sucky information into it. Your net worth tracking is easy. It's just a simple list of stuff you own and stuff you owe. And since it's your spreadsheet, you get to decide what's included and what's left out. For example, some people don't list their car as an asset, and everyone has a different opinion on whether your home should be listed as an asset or not. 
Real estate and joint venture values. Real estate assets are probably the hardest to get accurate values for every quarter. Services like Zillow can be helpful, but I've found Zillow to be very inaccurate when estimating prices for my multifamily properties. I tend to be very conservative on the real estate estimates. If I was to sell a property and cash out, I would have capital gains tax, transaction fees, etc. That would bring my actual cash value down. Also, I've started a few joint ventures, such as lending money and funding house flips. Since these are short-term projects, I usually just put in the value of the cash I initially invested, not the projected outcome or profit. Are QBRs for everybody? Whatever you wanna call your net worth tracking, yes, I believe everyone should be doing personal finance reviews. How else are you going to monitor and track your overall financial health? Without continual and specific tracking, you're just like one of those failing sales reps who are just hoping to hit their goals. Hope is not a strategy. The sales reps at my old workplace made millions and millions of dollars for the company. They poured their heart and soul into their work every single day at the office. I did too, but I also applied the same amount of effort or more to my personal stuff at home. And I encourage everyone to do the same. Even a tiny amount of planning and preparation pays off a huge return. Now get to it. You just listened to the post titled, It's Time for Your QBR, Quarterly Business Review by Joel of 5amjoel.com. And now we all know that turbulent financial times always happen at some time or another. Imagine having a portion of your savings protected from that volatility by owning the world's oldest and most trusted form of exchange, gold. Gold lets you save outside of the banking sector privately in a trusted fashion virtually anywhere in the world. And that's where Vaulted comes in. It's an incredibly low-cost solution to buy and sell gold securely, all through an easy-to-use web app where you can purchase and save gold at the tap of a finger. Because gold offers stability, investment in gold completes your portfolio and keeps you diversified. And a balanced portfolio of stocks and gold has a significantly lower risk of a large drop. Better yet, gold allows you to be your own bank. Banking system withdrawal restrictions, bail-ins, and bank failures are not concerns for the gold owner. You can buy and sell gold at your convenience. So check out Vaulted. Some of the authors I narrate even talk about it. Sign up for an account today at vaulted.com slash optimal. That's V-A-U-L-T-E-D dot com slash optimal. And I have that linked in this episode's description. I love a quarterly review because it feels like a reset to me. It's an opportunity to learn from the past and give myself a clean slate to try again. I actually do this with my finances each month, but I do a quarterly review for other goals. Every quarter, I focus on six targeted goals and I use the results to inform the next quarter's goals. I also give myself a grade for each goal because I miss the days of school when I got graded for my work. And yes, I totally understand how obnoxious that sounds. So I thought it would be fun to share with you my results from this year's first quarter. My first three goals were to help prepare me to do the 75 hard this year. If you don't know what that is, it's a 75 day challenge that helps build mental toughness. I'm officially starting it this coming Monday. One of the elements of the 75 hard is two daily 45 minute workouts. So to help me prepare for that, I had a goal to do at least one daily workout. That way, two per day wouldn't be as much of a stretch. My grade, 86%. I learned that this is easier for me if I get it done in the morning at 7 a.m. I also attempted to drink a gallon of water daily, another 75 hard requirement. My grade, 75%. What I learned from this attempt is that I have to get the first 32 ounces down before 8 a.m. When I do that, it's super easy for me to drink the full gallon. The 75 hard requires that you follow some kind of diet. I decided I'll do intermittent fasting, but as an experiment, I tried not to have any dessert or carbs last quarter. My grade, 80%. And I learned that the fasting is going to be much more sustainable for me during the 75 hard challenge. I crushed my goal of reading two books per month, 100%. That tells me that I should increase it to three books per month next time. And to spread the word about the Economy Conference, I had a goal to be a guest on 25 other podcasts. I was so proud of this one. My grade, 100%. 
I was a guest on 25 other podcasts and more than half of them have already released those episodes. And then my last goal was to finalize the speaker lineup and sponsors for the conference, which was a bit ambitious, but I'm about halfway there. So my grade, 50%. One of the things I like about giving myself a grade is that it helps me track progress over the long term. So for example, on my exercise goal, if I get an 87% next time, that means I did 1% better than last time. It's about progress, not perfection. And it helps me experiment with balancing ambitious goals with realistic ones. That'll do it for today and another installment of Optimal Finance Daily. Have a happy Thursday. Thank you for being here with me every day. And be sure to come back tomorrow for the Friday show where your optimal life awaits.